traveling and want that great cup of coffee you get at home? Well, today I'm going to show you how you can get great coffee anywhere you go with the AeroPress Brewer. So let's get started. Hey guys, Ted Jones here, owner of Riverview Coffee Roasters. I do roast to order coffee subscriptions in the top 1% of the world's supply. I ship them to you ultra fresh at the pace you like. I also teach you everything you need to know to get world-class coffee in the comfort of your own home. So if it's your first time on the channel and you'd like to see more, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Also hit the bell notifications button so you can always be notified when I put up a new video. All right, so today we're gonna to focus on travel brewing. We're gonna use the AeroPress Brewer. It's really lightweight, really inexpensive, simple to use, and some serious baristas use this thing. There's actually a championship every year where baristas compete to make the very best tasting cup of coffee. The inventor invented the Aerobi, which is a very popular Frisbee. He's a great inventor and he wanted a way that he could make several cups of coffee in a small space on the go. So we're gonna go over that. And also a lot of people like to use it to make espresso. So we're gonna show how you can make a faux style espresso when you're in your hotel or anywhere you're traveling on the road and you can satisfy that latte craving you have. Okay, so let's go over the different parts that come with the AeroPress. We've got a plunger here has a rubber top. It's real easy to clean. When you're done, you just press the coffee all the way through and dump it in the garbage. Give it a quick rinse off and a wipe to get any oils and excess grounds off. It's got a chamber here that you plunge through. has these numbers that will tell you this is for how many cups of coffee you want to make. That's the original style recipe by the inventor Alan Adler. And we're going to go ahead and do his recipe and make four cups of coffee with this small little brewer, which is basically going to be a concentrate that we're going to then pour equal amounts into each cup and dilute from there. The first recipe we're going to do is going to be a world championship recipe from the AeroPress Championships. And this is one that won a couple years ago that I particularly like. Uh, here's a funnel that comes with it. So you can easily dump your grounds in and you can also brew when you're plunging. You see it has the same shape. So you can put it over a cup that's even a little bit smaller because of the fact that it's more narrow, but it also just helps keep it solid and even. Some people like to use that, some people don't. I found that it works better in certain cups and other cups I don't need it. Um, so this is 35 grams of light roasted Ethiopian coffee we're going to do and we're going to grind it coarsely in our burr grinder. The burr grinders that you can travel with, you won't need electricity, you can hand crank them. They will take about a minute to grind the coffee, but personally I would prefer to spend a minute hand cranking than to drink stale bitter coffee for an hour. We'll go ahead and get that started. Now we've finished grinding. You can see it, that's real coarse in there. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our chamber and push it over our plunger, inverted style, just to the top of the four there. Put that on the scale, we'll tear it out. We're gonna put actually our funnel in there, make it easy to pour the grounds in. We'll level the bed out by the little shake there, which helps to make everything brew evenly. And the first thing we're gonna do is take 84 degrees Celsius water and we're gonna fill it up with 150 grams. You can find ways that are equivalents of all these measurements by going on Google and saying things such as, how much is 150 grams of water in cups or whatever way is easy for you to measure. Start our timer, we're gonna steep and stir for 30 seconds. So if you saw my video on the Clever Brewer, you saw how I would steep a light roasted coffee for four minutes to get a refined profile. For this travel style AeroPress, we're gonna stir for 30 seconds continuously so that we can extract the flavor much more quickly. 
Okay, at 30 seconds, we're gonna go ahead and put the lid on. It comes with these paper filters. I went ahead and put one in and rinsed it with hot water. You don't have to rinse, but if you don't rinse it, you will get slightly drier a cup of coffee. And if you were to do a side-by-side -side taste test, I think most people would notice a little bit of a difference, but it's up to you if you wanna take the time to do that. When it gets to a minute and five seconds, we're gonna start plunging into our cup. We want the plunge to take about 30 seconds. So total brew time of a minute and 35 seconds. You don't wanna to press too hard. You just wanna use your body weight so that it slowly flows in because if you push too hard, too fast, it's gonna all pack in at the bottom and block the flow. The grounds will just clog it up. And what will happen is you'll have to press so hard that you'll press out undesirable flavors and you'll end up with a bitter brew, okay? So we've pressed out the coffee, now we'll let it finish dripping and we'll go ahead and we're gonna dilute it with some water now. We're gonna put this on the scale, tear it out. Now we're gonna fill it with 160 to 200 grams more water to get it just to the right flavor, just the right delicate, nuanced balance we're going for. I'm gonna go with 180 grams today. Okay. Let's give that a taste. Wow. That was like a fruit bomb exploded. So flavorful, so balanced, a little bit sweet, but so clean and I haven't gotten so much fruit out of this coffee in any brew I've done before this one. I can see why that one won the competition. So that's proof right there that the little details are what make a huge difference. And when people are tasting a lot of different coffees brewed by a lot of different people side by side, those subtle changes in temperature, steeping times, grind consistency, the way it's stirred, every little bit of it contributes to the quality of the cup. And this is a testament to that. This coffee comes out really sweet if you brew correctly, if you know how to plunge the right way. That's the main key in the flavor differences is not only the grind and the steep time and all that, but also the way that you plunge the coffee, which basically should just be the natural pressure of your arm's weight. You don't wanna to have to force it. If you force it, it's gonna be bitter, and I know that from experience. Okay, now let's go ahead and reset, and I'll show you how to make four cups of coffee with the same little brewer. And I will show how to dump the puck into the garbage when you're done. So you remove the cap. You can save these filters. You can peel them off, rinse them off, and they can be used up to 80 times again if you're in a pinch. I know it sounds funny, but it's true. And then see how easily that comes off? Look, almost everything's gone. You give it a little wipe, give it a rinse, make sure you get all the oils off. And that's all the cleanup you really need. You're back to brand new again. You can tell I've been using this brewer for quite some time, right? I've had this brewer for a good 10 years or so. It's never failed me and I have no reason to need to replace it. So I just keep rolling with it. So for this recipe, we've got 60 grams of our same light roasted coffee here. And we went ahead and microwaved in a pouring vessel. And you can get a thermometer like this for the road if you want to get the uh, temperature just right. For me, having the tools is well worth it. For you, you may want to make some shortcuts, but you can see how you could do certain things, little hacks to make it easier for yourself. This one's at around 78 degrees Celsius. So we're right around 170, 175 degrees you're probably wondering why it is that I'm recommending lower temperatures for these brews if you do know about different coffee brewing temperatures such as in the last video where I said that you want to be between 195 and 205 degrees well the AeroPress is the one brewer that you're gonna want to make the water a little bit less hot there is some discrepancy about that between different people uh, I've tried it both ways I find they're both great I'd say it's a little bit sweeter and a little bit cleaner when you go with a little bit lighter temperature, 
okay so we're gonna go ahead and rinse the brewer and this time we're actually gonna invert it put it over the cup normal style after we do the grind so let's go ahead and do the grind first okay this one we've gone with a finer grind in between a drip and espresso grind you don't want it too fine and you don't want it too coarse you want it to be coarse enough that you can still plunge it with ease but you want to be fine enough that you're going to extract a lot of good flavor. So we'll shake it out to level the bed again. And this time we're going to use the microwaved water, just like Alan Adler suggests. So let's go ahead and fill this up. You want to fill it up high enough that you get a good amount of water in there. I'd say right to the top of that top round number. And then you want to just gently give it enough of a stir to make sure all the coffee is incorporated with the water. But if you notice, we're not really making any of it drip through yet. It's holding pretty well. So we're going to give it our stir here and get all the way to the bottom with it. Make sure it's all well incorporated. And then we're going to let it steep for about a minute, okay? Okay, we're at a minute now. We can go ahead and plunge that through. I've gone ahead and put three other cups here so we can divide this brew evenly. So what we're going to do to make it easy is pour a quarter of it into each cup. And then we can dilute each cup from there, giving us our four cups of coffee. So I'm pressing it with just my arm pressure. You can go ahead and put your arm up to your elbow so you get a little more leverage on it. And you just want to let it go nice and easy down. You hear that bit of oxygen at the end there. And you can continue pressing just till you hit the coffee bed. Okay. Shake off the excess. Let's go ahead and pour a little bit into each cup. I think that's about right. Okay, so let's dilute our cups now. There we go, we've got our four cups of coffee. Mmm. This has a sweetness to it, like an apricot nectarine kind of sweetness to it that I'm loving. So each different way we're brewing the coffee, we're getting a little bit of a different flavor coming out of it. And I have noticed that the Alan Adler recipe makes the sweetest cups. Wow. Yes, before I was getting so much more floral when I was brewing with other methods and this one, I'm getting so much of that stone fruit, that pitted, peachy, apricot nectarine style flavor that's just blows your mind. For me, at least, it really blows my mind. That is fantastic. I would take that any day. So <laughs> the man's right. Um, both of the recipes we've made so far have been outstanding. I would say the first one is just a little bit thicker tasting but they're very very similar uh, now we can go ahead and do a faux presso style you know it's basically like an espresso but by real standards it's not a true espresso but the good thing about it is it's going to be close enough and we're going to make ourselves a little latte i'll show you how you can froth up some milk on the go without any real tools okay so now we're ready for our third brew we've got 30 grams here of a dark roast Peruvian coffee. It's a really rich chocolatey coffee, perfect for making an espresso drink. This one is going to be a fine grind, but we're not going to want to make it so fine that it won't pass through when we plunge it. So let's go and do that grinding now. Here we go. We've got a pretty fine grind there. Wish you could smell that. It smells fantastic. 
So this one, we're going to do another inverted brew like we did the first time. It's neat. So you could see different ways. You could do it right side up or the other way around. Either way, if you do it right, it's not all going to pass through. So we're going to go ahead and put that on the scale, put our funnel on, put our coffee in. We can take the uh, funnel out now, shake it to level the bed, and we'll even out our brewer so that it's in there pretty flat like, okay. There we go. Now we can tear the scale off. And what we're going to do this time is we're going to fill it up with three times the weight. So that's going to be 90 grams. You'll find that two times the weight will actually be absorbed by the coffee. And that extra one time will give us the same ratio as you'd get from making an es a ristretto coffee. You can see where it lines up, right? So if you notice that we put the 30 grams in, which would be about six tablespoons of coffee, and it gets just to the bottom of the one. So let's go ahead and start this. We're going to go for a two minute steeping time or infusion. And these are all recipes I've gotten from experimenting and from seeing what other people do and how the results that they get from their coffees. So we've got it fully incorporated now. None of the coffee is clumped up or stuck to the bottom. When we get to two minutes, we're going to go ahead and flip it over and do our plunge. Okay, and so for the sake of travel needs, I've gone ahead and wiped out the grinder bottom and put some milk in there. We can go ahead and screw the cap on while it's steeping and give that a microwave and then shake it real good to froth it up once it's hot. So let's go ahead and put the cap on here. Now we're at two minutes. We'll go ahead and plunge that right into our cup. Careful when you flip it over. Now this one's a finer grind, so you're gonna find it's gonna take a little more pressure, but there's not much water in there, so let's push it through real fast. This one you do wanna push through fairly quickly because we're trying to make an intense espresso style shot. I push that all the way down. Now we've got our intense coffee. And then this will be our microwaved milk. We'll shake that up, froth it, pour it in. I'll go ahead and microwave it now so you can see exactly how it comes out. Okay, so I've microwaved the milk for a minute and 15 seconds. Now we can go ahead and give it a shake, build up a nice frothiness in it. You're gonna wanna shake it for around 30 seconds to one minute, depending how frothy you want it. Okay, now we're finished shaking. We can go ahead and pour it in our cup. There you go. You're on the go, latte or cappuccino. Voila. Mmm. That tastes just like the ones I make in the morning. For a travel espresso drink, that is fantastic. This coffee brewer is very impressive. So there you go. It's lightweight. Fits in a small space, inexpensive, and now you can make any kind of coffee you want anywhere you go. So if you enjoyed the video today, go ahead and hit a thumbs up and leave a comment. Ask a question or tell us how you like to brew your coffee when you're on the go. All right, so stay tuned for more videos coming up. Have a good one.